Are we a creation? And if so, what other races, and I mean specifically non-human, may exist? Today we'll touch on this idea and see what can be seen in both past and present. Welcome. Now this was a weird channel that was shared with me by Zal Moxis. Thank you, Zal. And it was after I'd been talking about the California gold rush. We were told that gold was simply littered all over the place. And I had proposed that it was the remains of a past civilization, parts of old buildings and infrastructure. We've also discussed gold could be the veins of either trees or beasts, large forms of life, and gold being a byproduct of death. Uncertain, but this guy goes out and finds gold, just laying all over the place, and emeralds and rubies, and I believe he's Russian. I don't understand a word he's saying, and I wish I did, and I usually just watch these videos bewildered. Sometimes he pulls up chunks of gold so large that I wonder why he even bothers with smaller ones that we see in other videos. Here he's found a giant diamond. And just mind-blowing. And really reminding me of what they used to say about the gold in California. Just laying around, laying in the rivers, on the banks. And now what, he's found some grails and plates of gold? And if he is in Russia, I'd imagine he's somewhere in the northern part of Russia. Somewhere up here in the graveyard of Tartaria. And this is my guess. Where do you guys think this guy is? And maybe somebody who speaks Russian has watched these videos. And could there be such remote places where gold is still scattered all over the place? And I've speculated in the past that this area was just nuked, obliterated by some unimaginable force as we see here, shredding the landscape, rendering it as some sort of Swiss cheese. And this is where I think this guy is. But again, I have no clue. I don't understand a lick of what he's saying, but I'm very curious. And I do continue to check out his videos every now and then, and I thought I would share with you today. But next, the main feature, another Russian share. And I watched this whole video and had no idea what was being said, and yet the story seemed pretty clear somehow, just through the pictorial images provided. And I want to see if I can share that with you. This pertains to different races, different species entirely. So first of all, in all the older maps, we see these what seem like mythical creatures, but over and over again, just like the mythical land masses, such as Friesland, and I really question the mythical anything. Here again, you see what I'm talking about. All sorts of creatures, lands. Is this all just metaphor, or is there more to this? Mythical lands and mythical creatures. All sorts of kingdoms of old, always depicted with these castles, just like we would today. It would be understood. Wolf dragons and birdfish. And the map is excellent because it's a very general story, made to be understood at a quick glance, made for all ages and education levels. A very simple portrait. And here are we seeing a war between man and beast. I'm not sure where we are, but I have seen such depictions as this on old maps of Iceland. This may very well be Iceland, and mind-blowing that they had these giant pots in which the rivers flowed from. Some of my favorite old maps of Iceland depicting skyscrapers. And indeed, here we are. Iceland, ice-free, and really just seeming like a very industrious country back when. Even in these old depictions, very active region. 
in many different ways, and surrounded by beasts. And then he gets into these types of images, seeming to be a people with no head, or at least not the kind of head that we have. Their head is built into their chest, and perhaps their brain is their heart, which would make more sense. And the hair grows off the back, and we're actually going to see a real photo of such a creature, or possibly, in a minute here. And then we have grand creatures with these large ears. Very interesting, because as a youth, I always drew creatures with large rabbit ears. And here it looks like they're sacrificing babies to the beasts. And again, a seahorse, seeming a little more flexible than our modern-day seahorse. And here we are again, near a mythical island, Nova Zemla, Tartaria. And it looks like he's depicting some beasts here in Tartaria. Some beasts and a mason's compass. And here I think he's going to show a comparison to this large bird, which I think exists in South America. I mean, looking like a seagull with teeth and just giant. And I do imagine if this is all a creation, certainly many creations would have come before us. And each new creation being threatened by the previous one, and vice versa. And so here we see a depiction of this prior world by these new modern people who are fairly modern in this depiction nice tools and hats pretty hip considering this is a time when beasts of old still roam the realm and very sad poor beast and i believe to some extent all creatures are innocent all creatures everything born innocent and naive ready to learn Whatever can be provided, and most often, behavior is simply taught, and unfortunately for the worst. And down here we can see what seems like a Loch Ness monster. And here we see what appears to be images of Bigfoot, or a hairy man, absolutely Bigfoot-like, and being persecuted. And here are a few different creatures now. The two-headed person, the head-on-the-chest type person, a cyclops, and what seems like the beginning of the mermaid, perhaps an offshoot. And again, really fascinating, we're going to look at some real mer people coming up here. And like I said, a real picture of one of these chest heads. And of course, we had cat and dog heads depicted in the old world. In fact, there were saints that were said to have been dog heads. And could these beings been the first prototypes for man? Or just for whatever. Again, the mermaid, the cyclops, and even this dog head being a famous saint. The Saint Christopher was just one example. Are commonly referenced. Similar to the half goat man. And so many skulls. Many hidden from us today. And here we see the persecution of the chest heads. Or at least a depiction of it. And very fascinating. And again, a chest head. Chest head. And these seem to be pointing at something. And I'm sure the leaves and the flowers, the stones, everything has meaning in this art, of course. I, of course, at a first glance, am just taking it for face value. Literally. No pun intended. And why not? Again, if you're a creator, we see so many different varieties of creation. Just in the insect world alone, for example. Why wouldn't it be at some point in time? Whether you believe in creationism or evolution, surely there would have to be thousands of possibilities. And here we go. Totally shocking. Let's just get right into it. Boom. Now, now this is it. Or this is one of them. And at first you look at this picture and you say, where's the head? Has it been photoshopped out? And this looks very old. I think we get a better picture of this in a moment. And please, somebody even let me know anything about this creature, this being, which there are obviously many. 
depictions of an old times. I never thought we'd see an actual picture of one. Totally mind-blowing. Is this a little tuft of hair? And certainly I do think it's possible. Take those essential parts of the head and build them into the lower torso. Why not? Probably kind of convenient. So was there such a people? Really, in this depiction and in this one, seeming like the same people. A natural people, pretty laid back people, and pretty high tech. And real quick, let's just look at a few others. Again, the rabbit creatures, the big eared creatures, noseless. And I think it would be many different directions would the creator have taken his creation on. And I'm not sure what this guy is even saying in this video if I'm even close, but very provoking to the mind. And many just probably thought it was all stupid, and like these things couldn't even exist. Two-headed people, and mermaids, and chest heads. And then we get to the end of the video, and we start to see such examples of perhaps leftover traces of these past genes and races, and seeming as if certain regions having more examples of these conditions that some people would call mutations. But when you start to see one after another in a particular area, we really have to question, is it a random mutation or deformity or something left over from the original design and actually a pretty advanced foot. Looks pretty well balanced. And this man doesn't seem to mind at all. 10,000 ways to design a foot, hand, or head. And no doubt if you're the creator. And here is a condition called the mermaid syndrome. Apparently a real study seeming to have been published in 1997. Here again, a look at the very kind-seeming dog heads trading. And a dog is very similar to a human. Oftentimes much better companions than any other creatures. And here we can have a look at this Saint Christopher in a few different depictions. And then we can look at Bigfoot, or people that are very Bigfoot-like and not seeming like a mutation, but seeming absolutely by design. And somehow this code has re-manifested. And here again, coming from the same region, perhaps the same family, not a fluke, a gene from the past carrying on. And here we see the persecution of the Cyclops entities, Again, everything being innocent at birth. Life is life. I believe everything has the right to live. And clearly everything came from the same source. Anything is possible. And so much is kept from us so that we don't realize this very simple truth. And as our past begins to open up and we see what was possible and how things may have been, then our eyes can become open to all the possibilities in the present moment and in the future. And are there any official examples in modern times? Here we can see a mermaid skeleton apparently in the National Museum in Copenhagen. And I thought here we would just look at this man called Thomas Marilyn. Born in 1782 to a rich, aristocratic family, he was raised by his father, Edward. His father was originally a general in the army, but after retirement traveled across the world, seeking artifacts and hidden species. Thomas and his father traveled together for many years until his father's sudden death. A bizarre quality of Marilyn was his apparent permanent youthfulness 
Even in his 80s, he still resembled a 40-year-old. In 1899, he took a small portion of his specimens on tour across America. Conservative attitudes of the time condemned his collection, calling them blasphemous. His reaction was severe, and the tour was canceled before it reached California. He would eventually fall into obscurity, but before that he donated his home to an orphanage, and he put all his artifacts, his entire collection, in the basement. And the terms of donating this orphanage, or property, was that nobody would open the basement door. Well, eventually the orphanage faded out of existence and they were going to demolish the building and that's when they found everything in the basement. And this is the official story. And let's have a look at this collection. Here we see a type of small mothman, dragons, some sort of aquatic creature, and something that looks like the predator from the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie and some more dragons and essentially there are hundreds of these specimens and of course I don't have to tell you that the man was ridiculed and called a fraud and hoaxer and just like any great collection given to either the credit of an original artist or a hoaxer one would have to have produced one of these pieces per day in a lifetime. The collection was so large. And I think many of them do seem very authentic, especially when we see the skin still attached to the body. And we have so many tales of old, speaking of these creatures, fairies and giants and everything that could be imagined. And yet here, one example of such a collection. A whole history presented and so quickly discarded by the masses. And not just discarding one or two, but the whole collection. And I think this is very important and would be worth performing experiments and further research to determine the authenticity of these specimens. The biggest limitation to our thinking is to think that we already know. Very fascinating, and I would love to dig into this much deeper, but for today, I think I'll just leave it here. Thank you so much for joining me, and do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Poor little guy, really, looking like he got hit by a bus. Personally, I wish they would have left our wings. Truly a handy feature. This creature clearly wore no clothes. We couldn't have that now. Little naked creatures flying around. And I'm not sure if this is the same guy or gal. Does this check out? Is this correct anatomy? And was this the real reason behind the reset? Much too difficult to control. Such a large variety of races. Or are they still here, dwelling below our feet, waiting for the appropriate season to return?